Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about aftermarket fan clutches and the pros and cons of them. Stay tuned. We got a lot to talk about. All right. So our test subject here has had two fan clutches. I had the factory one go bad, and we had an aftermarket replacement we put in. But this one's got a peculiar problem. As we go down the road, I want you to listen for this fan clutch, and it's up to temperature right now, and it will not slip. And during the winter time, you do not want a locked fan clutch. So. And we're going to go down the road, listen for the fan clutch, and you're going to hear how annoying that a locked fan clutch is. This should not happen. It should thermal cycle. This one used to, but it's not anymore. We're going to talk about the generalized problems with fan clutches in general and what can cause these issues that are not related to the fan clutch itself. All right, take off. Let's get some, uh, let's get some road time in. This is really loud, so bear with us. Aftermarket fan clutches are supposed to slip after you get to about three to 4,000 RPMs, and this one won't. The reason for that, when you're at speed, you don't need the fan clutch. It's robbing you for gas mileage, and it's gonna dirty your oil faster if your engine's running cold, which we're having that symptom right now. And this is among all product lines with fan clutches. I don't care if Dodge, Ford, Chevy, uh, Nissan, it doesn't matter. You know, these, these clutches, they, they lock. I mean, it's a bad day. And gas mileage is the first thing that suffers, but you know it also wear the engine down just because of that extra load that's really not needed. But he's going to take off, and he's going to run it up to about 3,000. It's going to stay locked. Eventually, we're going to get on a straight road. He's going to run it to 4,000, and this thing will not slip. And it's unfortunate because these fan clutches are not cheap. No, this is this one's ninety dollars. Yeah, it's ninety dollar Murray, right? Mm -hmm. All right. People get beside him and think he's racing or he's driving fast, and he's not. This is a five-speed V6. How much race can you get out of it, really? You can't. Not, not much. Not much. Oh, man. Just at night, you can hear it so well. come back up here real quick. RPMs. See if it thermal cycles again. Want me to bring it back up to four? No. It should. It shouldn't be on right now. It's too cold. Outside temperature right now is about 32 degrees. that fan clutch to cycling it should do it a lot faster a lot quicker and this one is lazy slow I don't know whatever you want to call it but it's robbing power and it's still in gas mileage and every penny counts when you run a business but then it's back on it shouldn't it should cycle better than that I actually have to hit the gas. 
just because the fan is robbing so much power that when I should just put it in second, it should just coast down the hill. It doesn't because the because the fan's taken away from the power. there so it's definitely got enough heat to set the thermal cycle switch off or thermal cycle valve excuse me and the aftermarket ones are funny they they're designed to run opposite a factory meaning that when a factory fan clutch slips until it gets hot well it's backwards on an aftermarket where it does not slip until it sees heat and then it variates the rate of slip needed to keep the heat where it's supposed to be when we get back to the shop we're going to talk about six reasons that can cause a fan clutch to seem like it's bad when in reality it's not. We've already checked all that here. We're not having that problem. We just have a fan clutch that's locked. We're not cycling correctly. We can say that too. So some of you are going to ask, well, you know, the fan clutch drops power, does all this stuff. Why don't you just switch to electric? Well, there's some pros and cons to electric, just like there's pros and cons with the fan clutch but I will tell you we're gonna give it one more try this will be the third fan clutch this vehicle's had we do want to thank our friend Rob down at our local O'Reilly's for setting us up with a warranty replacement uh, we got it on loan and we, we definitely want to thank him for that because sometimes you know we got to show bad parts with good parts and do it all in the same shot so that's why we're doing this at night normally I like to shoot him during the day but you know sometimes like with this issue I'm tired of hearing him have drivers yell at him and, and throw stuff at him when he's not driving reckless or rude so it's one of those things we just don't have we're just out of time so hope you enjoy the video we're gonna get back to the shop and we're gonna do the six things that can cause a fan clutch to act goofy when the fan clutch is not the fault now what you're looking at is the temperature coming across the radiator going to the thermal valve in the fan clutch. And right now as you see 110 degrees the sucker should be slipping. temperature is way too low that fan should slip and I know it's aftermarket and they run a little goofy but it's up to temperature you see how fast it pulled all that heat out it shouldn't be that loud and it shouldn't stay locked that long all right I'm having shut it off we're gonna go over the six things real quick that will cause your fan clutch not to work right we don't have any of those problems but I need to let you know you may have this problem
Now that we've given the engine some time to cool off, we're going to talk about the fan clutch and actually how it determines when it's time to slip and when it's time to lock. So right here we have a thermal couple valve and what this spring does is it gets tight or looser as the air temperature changes. It allows fluid to come in or out to either lock or unlock this. This is the water pump spinning. This is the fan clutch catching. As you see there's good resistance there but when these blow the seal, lose the oil, or something mechanically goes wrong, this valve doesn't cycle, these will lock on you. And that's the aftermarket problem. And it has to be that way or they'd be sued by every auto manufacturer for trying to mimic what, what the factory does, which is slip till it's hot. This does not slip until after it's heated up. But a factory OEM will slip until it's needed. And that's how you can tell the difference. You're going down the road and you hear a guy with a loud fan, well, you know, for one, he's changed this part. But number two, something else is wrong in his system. Now this truck, I'm going to tell you the next six reasons why this fan clutch can lock, even if this is good, will surprise you. So let's go through that right now. But the first one, thermostat stuck open, radiator cannot get hot enough to cause the thermal valve to cycle. Number one. Number two, water pump does not circulate coolant fast enough to get hot enough to cause the thermal cycle action in the fan clutch. Number three, clogged radiator. This is a big one. This one had a clogged radiator and it actually blew up the factory. I'm going to show a video of that now. But from that video you can see where the clutch should be spinning up and it's not. Two parts. It lost the oil but then the radiator was clogged. Number four, you put the wrong fan clutch on. When you really should have a medium duty, you decide to go big, go home kind of thing, you put a severe duty on and those do not unlock. Number five, you got the wrong blade count. When we get this one off, I'll show you that one more in detail. So number six, fan clutch seal leaks. Now this one's funny. If it leaks, it can lose the oil, can either lock the fan clutch up or keep it unlocked. Automotive engineers have decided with aftermarket fan clutches, better for them to fail locked than unlocked because they'd rather you run cold than overheat your engine and have to replace your engine. I mean, that could be a four or $5,000 mistake. So, you know, in this regards, we're grateful that it did lock and it didn't unlock, didn't overheat, but on the same time, it's bad too because it's causing us to burn more fuel. It's causing more load on the engine, which in the end is gonna end up killing this little 3.9. So at this point, we're gonna go ahead and rip it off we're going to see if we can't find something silly with this, see if we can figure out what caused the thermal valve to fail, and put the new one in, go out for a road test, and see if we've actually cured this. We've done our diagnosis, everything else is good, this thing has new water pump, new thermostat, new radiator, so it's not that, it even has cardboard in front of the radiator, it's not that either. As you've seen, the temperature dropped from 120 down to 100, it should be slipping. So at this point, you want to do this kind of work when the engine's cold. Um, most cars you're going to have to take the belt off, so we're going to take the belt off or truck, um, depending on what you got. We're trying to work in more of a generalized fashion than just the particular year we're working on. So if you like that, let us know in the comments because that's kind of the direction we want to go is more generalized than specialized. We'll do specialized, no problem, but we're going generalized for a while. All right, Kev, start ripping. So generalized fan clutch removal, uh, most of the time you're going to have a serp serpentine belt in the system. Um, this one we're lucky in a fact all we have to do is just crack that nut down there. We don't have to take the belt off, but in some applications you may have to do a little bit of surgery. We're lucky with the Dodge here we don't, but if you do just realize, you know, just a couple parts come out of the way and get to it. But this one, they left you enough room to get at it, but sometimes they do require specialty tools. Kevin, show them our specialty tool for this job. All right, that's all we need. <laughs> Plumber's wrench. You're not going to have, you know, the, the $60 kit. Are you going to run real Riley when your engine's overheating? No, right. you're not. You're going to have a tire iron and a plumber's wrench. That's all you need. If oh. I remember right, most fan clutches are on counterclockwise, which means that the thread is reversed. Pretty much. So that means I actually need to tighten it to loosen it. Right, because as it spins, if it's loose, it'll tighten up from the resistance of the fan. Mm -hmm. 